hey guys welcome to my channel thanks for tuning in today don't forget to hit your notification bell for the new videos and then like and subscribe let's dive into how relationships get ruined these are just 10 little tricks or ways that i've learned through my personal history how my relationships got ruined so let me share with you guys these a few ways so i'm just going to read through the list really quickly because i'm going to dive into how my relationships got ruined like background on it and how i overcame it but this is the um 10 these are the 10 ways relationships get ruined the first one is tolerating repeated disrespect the second one is cycles of fighting fighting breaking up and then getting back together like repeated patterns and um and like i would say also the fact that is like not knowing how to let people go then we got number three criticism and controlling one another so you can ruin people by criticizing them and trying to control them um number four is expecting to meet needs that are not stated so that's both parts if you're not stating needs it can ruin the relationship because the person will start to feel like they're not being valued or appreciated but you have to learn to state those things because sometimes people really don't know how to value and treat people because when you look at other prior relationships that they may have had some people probably tolerated a lot of disrespect and you know disregard because they didn't really know their values so when you come in and you don't really state your standards and your values i've learned that people try to box you into that category of the last person they were dealing with five is getting over it when you're hurt um that can ruin relationships because if you're not very vocal with what you're upset about and what they did and how you need them to change in order to continue the relationship or where what kind of middle ground you guys need to meet for the relationship to continue on it ruins it because you're too busy getting over it and balling it up and letting it in and then exploding and then that can hurt the relationship worse because then now you're coming out of character on someone that you're really trying to build something with going days without talking or engaging is definitely a major red flag as well as it ruins relationships because number one it does not build trust it does not build safety it also brings in insecurity and it also brings in other people's past trauma and triggers because you are not valuing them you're number one disregarding them and number two you're really showing that you don't want this person in your life when you're just disappearing on them and then popping up and then coming in and then disappearing. It's also showing that you're treating this person like I will always call it like a toy on the shelf. Like I'm going to come pick it up, take it off, pick it up, take it off. And that's also another per another way of saying being an option. And this can even happen in friendships because some friends tend to value other friends based off of the mindset. So that's why I also say it's important to have the same mindset with your friends and who you're dealing with because you can find yourself feeling like you're not valued because this person just probably has the same mindset as the other person that they're dealing with instead of the one like you um feeling emotionally disconnected or unhappy is number seven and this is just really dealing with people who don't know their own emotions don't know how to um, project them don't know how to speak them out loud they can find themselves really unhappy in relationships because they're not releasing what's going on in their mind they're not being stimulated mentally and it's really important especially through life and longevity where real life happens and real circumstances come into place you can't be dealing with people who don't know life experiences and don't know about how to deal with tough situations um number eight i put down your needs being repeatedly ignored so when you're saying to someone cons consistently like i need communication i need to be engaged i need to be spoken to with respect i need to have honesty i need to have integrity involved when you're telling these people what you are needing and they're ignoring it that basically tells you they don't care about how you feel and they're not valuing the relationship and for me i've learned when that happens just to remove myself because i don't have time to keep saying the same thing over and over and i'm not going to keep giving you time to time again and do it because i can find someone else too and then i'll find someone else that actually wants to do it that's the benefit about being a woman that knows her worth and value as well as what she brings to the table ladies because when you really start honing out who got me you and what you're created to be when these men come with these you know what the last person did and expecting you to not have any boundaries in place and they want you to just have your feelings repeatedly ignored that person doesn't want you in a long-term 
relationship. They don't want any, they don't see any value there. So I found why well, stay someplace where someone don't value me when there are so many other options to be valued, literally. Boundaries are frequently violated. So I had a lot of issues with this, with people stepping over my boundaries once I state them or people insulting my intelligence as if I don't know that they've overstepped that boundary or repeatedly doing it as if like they don't care about it. They disregard it. Like I'm just going to do what I want to do. And to me, when you start to say I'm going to do what I want to do and you don't value my boundaries or anything, then I'm going to remove you because there's somebody else who wants to come in and they want to respect my boundaries and they want to me to be a part of their life. So why would I, I just learned, why would I, you know, what's crazy is, and I've never been the type to hold on to a man. I've honestly been the let go person. I'm the person I was replacing men like a clockwork and because of issues like i said like with inconsistencies and lies and cheating and just involving me with drama and insulting my intelligence and that's why i also found myself in a lot of conflict too because i found that when men see the bounce back and the replacement it really bothers their ego and i found a lot of men purposely trying to keep trying to play with me and that's what also let me out of character with a lot of situations too because since I was always quick to just block or quick to just move on to another man, some people were getting just hurt along the way and they started to play, play games with me. So that's another way of boundaries being frequently violated too because when you're telling someone you want to move on and you're consistently trying to find a way to press in on you and press into your life and keep bothering you and keep coming, eventually you blow up. And that's kind of what I went through a lot because... People just didn't, I just, because I was quiet and I seemed like I was calm and nice that they thought that I was another person until they seen something different. But number 10 is my last one, constantly walking on eggshells. I dealt with this when I was dealing with a certain person I was trying to remove myself from. It was hard because I had, like I said, some stalkers and some people who just didn't know how to let me go, who were forcing me to be with them. And, um... I was walking on eggshells because I was just really trying to figure out like how to get rid of this person, how to like me being nice is not working, me being me not working. Like it just I was I was going through some situations where nothing I was doing was working. I was literally running out of options and <laughs> and I was just getting so frustrated and I just felt so just just lost, you guys. Like honestly, just lost and just lost in the sauce because i didn't know no route out and i just finally prayed you know i prayed on everything i went through with all my relationships and i just knew like the only way i was going to find good people and a good husband and a good life was seeking something above me better than me stronger than me and that was the creator i knew it was something bigger than me out there i knew there was somebody that created me other than my parents and I wanted to seek that and I seeked it for so long but just in so many wrong ways because I was dealing with so many weird people and weird religions and it just moved around so much as a kid and just experienced so much that I just was just lost on really where God truly was was he in the Quran was he in Hinduism was he in Buddha you know whatever was he in yoga what I was looking in so many places and then I finally picked up that Bible and <laughs> it's just been a blessing like all these things that I'm learning that I put on my video are things that God has teach me and show me about me and really how I was showing up in my relationships and what I was allowing people to do to me and how a lot of that really based on childhood trauma and how I allowed certain things as a child. So when I grew up into adulthood and I didn't know another route, I was allowing those same things from childhood to come in because I really didn't have no one teach me how to navigate adulthood and be a woman and the things about men that are out there, the things about women that are out there, the things about relationship. I never really had that lesson taught to me. So I literally lost taught i mean i literally learned all of my relationship experience and knowledge um 
through going through it, through the motions with people, through the up and the downs of people, through the betrayals, through the mistrust, through the cheating, through the lies, through the schemes, through the talking behind my back, through the uh, physical violence, through the physical, uh, um, no, no, physical violence, verbal violence, through the police reports, through the allegations, through the, uh, 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 through the lies, through the grapevine, period. And I just dealt with all of that being doing all these things. And that's how my relationship was getting ruined. And also not doing these things, but allowing these things too. Because when you allow these things, the relationship ruins automatically because they don't even value the relationship. And that's another thing I had to learn. Two people have to come together and align with the same values when it comes to relationships, friendships, and um family friendships and spouse friendships that's why it's important to really talk to people and i felt like for so long like i said in prior videos as a child my pen my values my thoughts my feelings were never considered valid you know they were never considered so i never thought to share as in depth on them and be more vulnerable but i learned with having that i was dealing with people who had that same traumatic past who didn't know how to align with me and I also wasn't aligning with them and I that's why I say like I don't I don't I've never been a person to go ahead and judge on someone's journey because I had my own journey and it took me a lot of years to develop this mindset develop this peacefulness and calmness in me because to be honest I was an angry woman and I was an angry woman for a lot of years and I did a lot of things out of anger to people that were they were they were truly disgusting you know they weren't the parts of me that I was really proud to talk about um some of those names people called me still affects me to this day because it, it was never truly who I was it was a person inside of me that was just hurt and felt like I wasn't being heard and the only way to be heard was to project not only this anger but this physical um interaction with people so people can listen because I felt like I wasn't being heard <laughs> as I said in a lot of videos and that's how I learned to speak my voice differently as well because I never really had an issue with articulating it was just I always waited to the last minute to articulate because I always felt like in an internal thing that my opinion and my values and what I thought and my standards didn't matter because I grew up with that impression. And that was how things got through was letting it go, moving on, you know, I'm too sensitive, you know, I've gotten, I was a crybaby, I've gotten all types of stuff as a child, you know, when trying to express how I feel. But neither to say about that it also brought me into this toughness to where I didn't want to share that anymore, which led me to only releasing it when I felt fed up. I've also learned that by my actions also ruined a lot of relationships that I had as well because I wasn't handling the disrespect or my feelings not being validated or boundaries being um disrespected well i never truly knew how to handle those type of situations because growing up typically when someone disrespected you or did something to you out of pocket um we dealt with it with a little bit differently and i don't really like to get into details on the things i did to people because a lot of it's not truly nice and a lot of it was in retaliation to people doing things to me and i had to learn that it's not always good to hit back it's not always good to go beneath where the person went because sometimes it really messes with you more than them because it gave me a lot of guilt and shame not only that because once i got out of that type of character i started to develop a name that people would say in a joking matter but truthfully to me it wasn't a joking matter i really don't feel like i'm that person i felt like i was being disrespected and people needed to be taught a lesson but that those those words started to affect me so then i started to live those words like okay if y'all want to sit here and say i mean i'm a savage and i guess that's what i am you know and then i had to look back like well that's not really what i am i did some things out of anger 
to people because they were doing things to me and they weren't doing nice things to me. These people were, you know, just yelling at me. That was not what these people were doing to me. I had people literally placing their hands on me. I had people pulling guns out on me. I had people taking pictures of my parking space and stalking me. I had people tell me they gonna come shoot up my house. I'm not talking about people who yelling. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about people talking about doing some serious stuff. I had people making police reports on me allegations lying on me i had to go to court like this is stuff when i mean like i literally had a lot of people trying to ruin me and when those things were happening to me my actions were making the worst because i was having so much anger that i was retaliating and making my my situation worse basically honestly because i felt like the first way i was doing it wasn't working so i was like well let me let me deal with these people alligated and I just, I really learned that not only was it ruining the relationships I was having, but it was ruining me. And it also started to ruin, I would say, the image I have with others. Because when you get into these type of situations where you're dealing with crazy people and they talking about doing this and you back and forth, you're doing that with them. You can imagine what they tell other people you are because it's two sides to every story. So... I would hear through the grapevine what people would say, what people would think, and it would offend me or hurt my feelings. But at the same time, I've always had a stance of I'm going to defend myself and I don't really care, you know, what people's opinion is. I have definitely learned to defend myself differently now, but I don't regret how I defended myself then because, like I said, I had people literally doing things like that were serious and I learned that that happened and i was going through those motions because one i was tolerating repeated disrespect okay that was what was going on because like look at those things i said people was doing to me that was blatant disrespect and i was in a cycle a constant cycle break up and get back so some of these people that was doing these things to me this was a repeated cycle like these are people that i would go through this issue with and then bring them back in and this is what i mean by it's really important to learn the cycles that come from your past because even the reason why when i think about why i was tolerating those cycles i remember as a child my mother would do things like an example she would come and she would steal things from us and we'll get mad at her, we'll yell at her, you know, whatever. And then we'll bring her back in. And she'll steal again. And she'll steal again. And she'll just keep doing it. She'll lie. And when I found that, we, I, I, that's what I learned as a kid, to tolerate people coming in disrespecting me, it made it a cycle. So people decided to do it. But I wasn't really understanding that the reason why I was tolerating that was because I had been tolerating it from a childhood. And you really bring your past with you into your present. So when you're not really aware of your trauma and the things you've been through in life and what the triggers are, you will find yourself getting out of character a lot because you don't understand why people are disrespecting you or doing these things to you or threatening you and why you are allowing it and why you're going through the cycle. And when I took that solitude and like pull back and really start reflecting and think about those things, it really made so much sense, which is why I say this list is so important because this list is literally how you ruin relationships. Like these are literally 10 key reasons how relationships get ruined, whether it's friendship or whether it's with a man, whether it's with the family. Cause I've had family members that I've had to fight. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's what I'm saying. Like, it's like, these are the things that I just feel like it ruined a lot of my relationships when it comes to how I grew up and how I went into future relationships. And when I learned these things, I decided to, number one, set boundaries. Number two, I learned to learn my triggers and learn what I wasn't and was not gonna tolerate. And then I, did, I, moved, I removed a lot of people out of my life that I felt like I knew wasn't gonna bring those boundaries, never brought boundaries, never respected me. I just removed those ones. And then the ones that respected my boundaries stayed. And it just brought more peace to me. And it just brought more calmness to me. It really just made me focus more on me and internally me and how I was showing up and what I wanted to be next. Because what I was before 
wasn't the representation that I wanted to bring into the future. The relationships that I had before wasn't what I wanted to bring into the future. The things I tolerated before was not what I wanted to bring into the future. And I had realized that in order for me to change all of those ways and things that I tolerated, I had to hone in on me, my background, um, my actions that I played a part of a lot of those things and um, what I let people do to me. And I found that a lot of things that I was doing was not only toxic, but I also was tolerating toxic things because we sometimes really don't know what toxic truly is. And people always just assume that it's just automatic, like fighting, beating. But sometimes criticism, like I said, for one of them, criticism and controlling, the small things like that can really be a way to ruin a relationship and hinder another person's mental development. So those are the 10 ways of how you can ruin a relationship. I'm going to repeat them because I don't think I'm going to put them in the description box this time, you guys. Tolerating a repeated disrespect is one. And number two is cycles of fighting, breaking up and getting back together. Number three is criticism and controlling one another. Number four is expecting to meet needs that are not stated. Number five is getting over it when you are hurt. Um, number six is going days without talking or engaging. Number seven is feeling emotionally disconnected or unhappy. Number eight is your needs being repeatedly ignored. Number nine is boundaries frequently frequently violated and number 10 is constantly walking on eggshells all of these are 10 ways to run a relationship whether you're doing it or whether you're tolerating it and the more longer you let these toxic um ways and patterns consist in your life the longer you will mentally be undeveloped you won't have no growth you won't be surrounded by people who can elevate you you'll find yourself stuck in positions where you can't move ahead and um you'll find yourself unhappy and lost and just ready to give up. And I find that if you are that person, you need to change. And if you are dealing with those things, you need to remove those people and then still change because both ways, I feel like in every scenario, everybody needs to change something. Everybody's not coming to it perfect. And if you don't hone in on you need to change yourself, then it'll be harder for you to build those relationships and it'll be easier for you to ruin them. So I definitely hope you guys like this video. Don't forget to hit your notification bell for new videos and then subscribe and then hit the like button. Take care.